Welcome back to my channel of Gentle Flamingo. I apologize for the lateness of this video, but work and the weather have conspired against me for two weeks straight. Uh, but that's all just complaining and excuses. So let's get on with the delayed part seven of my Nerdy Gurdy build where I apply my finish, get the tuners put in and get all the keys and their tangents put in place. To get started, I've masked off my wheel as well as the crank handle since I finished those up before I put them on the Gurdy and I'm using this Minwax finish. I meant to get the satin finish like I used for the Gertie in the rough, but of course I wasn't paying enough attention and grabbed the clear gloss instead. Oh well, shiny Gertie it is. Now I'm not the best finisher in the world, so don't follow my technique here. In fact, don't follow anything I'm doing here. I tend to get impatient and apply too much finish at once, so of course I had to frustratedly sand out several drips and reapply the finish. I will aspire to do better in future projects. Anyway, on to the tuners. In addition to the six machine tuners and their hardware, I'll be using these two circular pieces cut from six millimeter plywood and these two rectangular pieces cut from three millimeter plywood. I've already painted and finished these pieces. Uh, you'll notice that I've only painted and finished one side since the other side will be hidden against the side of the tuning head. I'll set all the nuts, washers, and screws aside for now and start by fitting a tuner into one of these circular wooden pieces and marking where to drill a hole for the small screw that will hold the tuner in place. The screw is probably not required in this case to hold the tuners in place, but I like to have them there anyway. For the tuners that go through the rectangular wooden pieces, I like to have them both facing the same way, but eh, that's just my preference. Once I get all the holes marked and drilled, I do need to do a little adjusting to the screws because they are currently too long. I'll estimate how long they need to be to keep them from coming through the back of the wooden piece, mark them, and then clip them off just a little above the mark. And now it's just rinse and repeat for all six tuners. If you've decided not to use the screws that came with the tuners, you won't need to do all this. And now it's time to install these units on the tuning head. The tuners on the circular pieces will go into the two holes closest to the key box. And of course this one won't stay. It, fine, it can just sit out for now. The other four tuners will go into the remaining four holes from the inside of the little box area in the tuning head. It looks like they won't fit, but they will. Once the tuners are seated all the way into the tuning head, I'll put on the washers and nuts. And finally, I'll use a wrench to snug them down the rest of the way.
While doing this, I found it was much quicker and easier to use the closed end of the wrench instead of the open one. I really need to practice the whole work smarter, not harder thing. Next, I'm going to install the hardware on the tailpiece. The top two holes in the tailpiece are for a couple of holding screws, while the ring terminals will go on the bottom four screws to hold the drone and trumpet strings. I'm using six number eight half inch wood screws and four ring terminals for this. When you look at the ring terminal, you'll see it has a flat side. I like to put that side against the girdie so that the little tunnel part is easy to access when I put the strings on later. I'm also going to angle these terminals up towards the top of the girdie. And of course, make sure the tailpiece is all the way in. I had to take these screws out and redo it because I didn't notice that when I first put them in. Once the four ring terminals are installed, I'll add my strap button. It goes in the small hole right below the crankshaft. My strap buttons came with mounting screws and these little felt rings to put between the button and the girdie. One button goes on the tailpiece, and the other goes in this small hole under the tuning head. Huh, I was a little stumped for a moment because it looks like I'm turning the screw to the left to tighten it. I'm not really though, I filmed this with the front camera of my phone so everything is flipped. Okay, moving on to the keys. Once again, I've done something that is not recommended. I have painted and finished the entire key. It's generally not recommended to paint nor finish the shafts of the keys since paints and finishes have the potential to absorb moisture and cause the key to stick at just the wrong time. If you want your keys to have some color, you can use a stain and that's it. If you want to apply a finish to the key heads, just be sure to mask off the shafts first. I'll be sure to follow my own advice for my next Gertie. For now though, I need to fit these keys into the holes in the key box because with all that paint and finish, they don't quite fit anymore. Plus, there's a little residue in the keyholes from applying the finish, so I'll need to carefully, carefully file the edges of the holes. If you choose to do this, treat it like you treated the wheel. Go slowly and check the fit often. It's very easy to get carried away and take off too much. And here are all my keys, nicely fitted into their homes. Before I put all the tangents on, I'll put a strip of felt along the top edge of this side of the key box. This will reduce the noise the tangents make against the side of the key box when the keys fall back into place after being pressed. I'm using this black acrylic felt to cut out a strip that is slightly thicker than what I need and then trim it down until it fits. I suppose I could measure everything out and make a pattern, but this way is simpler and just a little less time consuming. And here we are, all trimmed up. Oh, nope. Uh, wrong piece, sorry. 
here we are, <laughs> all trimmed up. It's slightly longer than I need, so I'll just clip off the extra and then glue it down. Since this strip just needs to stay in place and won't have much stress on it, if any at all, I feel pretty confident in gluing it straight to the finish. If you want to be extra sure that it will stay in place, you can sand where the strip will go to add a little tooth for the glue to grab onto. Now that the glue is dry, it's time to get all the tangents put on. There are two types of tangents, tall and short. The 28 tall tangents will go on the lower key row, and the 20 short tangents will go on the upper key row. I'll use these 10mm M2.5 bolts to put them on, two for each key, so 48 in total. Due to the shape of the last few keys on the lower row, I'm going to start with the key nearest the wheel, which is lower key number 14. I've got them all set out in order to make things just a little easier for me. Since this is a lower key, I'll use the tall tangents and the pointed side of the tangent should point away from the key head. I will admit this is my least favorite part of assembling the Nerdy Gurdy because there are 48 of these things to put in. Granted, it might be a little easier and faster to use a motorized drill, but I feel like I have more control doing it this way. Anyway, after a bit of a struggle, I finally have my first tangent on, with the long sides of the tangent parallel to the long sides of the key shaft. <laughs> Oops. Can you see the mistake here? It seems I've trimmed my felt strip a bit too short. At least this is a simple fix. Now I do switch it up a bit as I put all these tangents on, but it might be better to put the near tangent on first since this will keep the key from sliding out of the far hole at the wrong moment. The next key will be the upper key number 10 with two of the short tangents. <laughs> Looks like Shadow is jealous of all the attention the Gertie is getting. I guess that's what I get for leaving the shop door open. Just like that first key, make sure that the tangents are pointing away from the key head and that the long sides are parallel to the long sides of the key shaft. And then just keep going, one key at a time, until they're all done. You may wonder why I don't do all the lower keys and then all the upper keys. Well, because the keys and tangents take up a lot of space, especially those smaller keys near the wheel that are really close together, so I put them in like this to give myself room to work. And finally, the last key. Hooray! The last thing I'll do for this video is to put a few of the drone and trumpet bridge pieces into place. If you want a more detailed look at how these parts go in, go check out part 6 of this build. Okay, here are all the keys and tangents in place. I will admit, I'm glad that's done. <laughs>
Join me for the next video where I'll get the melody bridge set up and perhaps get some strings on this thing. Bye. Uh, take already. <laughs> There's a box under the table. <laughs>